So, Nick, I can't believe yeah. it's been, what, five right. seasons now, and right. we haven't done a documentary yet. <laughs> uh, this is going to be the first one, right? Yeah. yeah. So thank you to our Patreon uh, pick for, uh, you know, Schumacher today we're going to be talking about. With, right, uh, and it's a bit delayed because he's like, let's do the Schumacher film, and I'm thinking Joel Schumacher, like, which one? He's like, you're watching Batman and, and it's like, which Joel Schumacher? <laughs> no, the, the, the Netflix documentary about Michael Schumacher, the Formula race strike driver. Yeah. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Gothy from GoatFilmReviews.com. I am Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following us. And for your loyal fans, thank you for continuing to support the show. You can follow the show on Twitter and on Instagram. We do have a Patreon. Check that out. So some great deals to tell us uh, what movies we should review in the future. Both Kyle and I are members of the Minnesota Film Critics Alliance. Our votes are in. Check out that webpage for our final vote picks yeah. of the best of 2022. And um, that's it, yeah. yeah. So today we're talking, thank you again to Tyler Prawl, our patron, for yeah, selecting hi, uh, this film. Thank you, Tyler, for always picking movies that either A, I haven't seen, or B, um, have been wanting to take time to watch. And now we have both with uh, Schumacher. So yeah. this documentary chronicles the life and career of Michael Schumacher, one of the legends of Formula One racing, who accomplished previously unheard of feats in the sport and the tragedy that changed his family's life forever. So the uh, the premises of Michael Schumacher probably um, because it's almost like Bobby Fischer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a documentary about Bobby Fischer being a, a master chess player, and all of a sudden he just vanished. And it kind of happened with Michael Schumacher. He was this great success, very popular, great su success. Sorry, I can't get my letters out. Very popular. All of a sudden there's tragedy, and then he's not in the no. There's no follow up, no updates. Mm -hmm. He's kind of coveted away, including the documentary. We see interviews from his family, but we don't actually even see him either, you know, uh, like a development, like an update. Yeah. So it's more like the mystery component of where, where it's, what happened, what conditioning and, and is very guarded. Yeah, and see, I went into this, I knew the name Michael Schumacher, but I knew right, it like yeah. faintly like as part of Formula One. I never really, I never followed Formula One all that much, so I don't really have all that inside. Like, no, but he put it on like ESPN Sports Center in the 90s, which was a big deal. Yeah. I and mean, then all of a sudden, that's how I recognize it. Yeah, that. he made the sport very much something that was accessible across all brands because exactly. it was kind of like a yeah. Michael Jordan situation where like someone is is doing something that hasn't been done before and people are taking notice even outside the sport. Yeah. Um, this is a case where, yeah, I didn't know anything about his life in detail. So watching it, I wasn't sure whenever he'd show up on camera, is this old footage, new footage? Like, so I was kind of part of the mystery of like, why are we not seeing him as much? What happened to his life that where, he, where he's not talked about or not in that kind of conversation? Of course, I knew Mika Hakkinen, who was uh, one of his rivals. I knew that name pretty well. Right. Um, well, every good athlete has some good adversary or counterpart. Yeah, and right? it seemed yeah. like Schumacher had a couple. Um, because <laughs> yeah. especially you get that moment that that beginning rivalry because uh, Ayrton Senna was the world champion when when Schumacher joined the sport, so. yep. um, and then there was that whole rivalry between them where you know kind of Senna saw you know Michael as a potential problem, uh, that horrible crash that we actually get to see in the film and that ends up taking you know Senna's life, and I think that was such a pivotal moment for Schumacher because. Basically, every crash that he's in afterwards, there's that extra level of understanding mortality. Yes. You know, and you see he gets angry after crashes, even the ones caused by him. He gets more angry because I think I he realizes it, they put him in danger. Right, because they don't, you, you could make him safer, but, you know. Yeah, and even yeah. like practicing, you know, it's kind of like, they kind of make that joke, you know, with like movies like Talladega Nights, that when you're in a crash, it takes a while for you to get back on your game. But I imagine it really does, especially losing someone who's on the same level as you. So I made a weird analogy of a chess player, mm -hmm. and I use kind of critique Formula One almost like chess, that you wait for the other drivers to make mistakes that you can get an advantage over mm -hmm. with. You don't try to, you minimize your mistakes and faults as well as take advantage for the other person's mistakes, and that's how you play chess. You never really win in chess, you wait for the other person to make their error, mm -hmm. and then that's when you strike. And I feel that that's almost like Formula One racing is you wait for the other person to do their air, whether it's put on the wrong tires, you know, the right turn, you just clutch at the wrong time, and then that's when you get your advantage. Yeah, it's as if chess, but then you also flip a coin every time you move a piece, and if it's tails, you don't get to move, because there's also that, you know, added level of, like, complete luck, complete happenstance fate. Right. You know, I mean, there's that scene where he's trying to pass, um, he's trying to pass Villeneuve, I believe, 
and ends up crashing into him. Right, right, the um, tail, because he cuts it too short. Yeah, he cuts it too short, and it's like, he was doing everything right in his head, but that didn't matter because you're still anticipating the other drivers. You know, it's like all the chess pieces are moving at the same time. Yeah, even though the analogy is he 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 did the right move, but he waited too late, or like it's so it's same almost like chess. You you wait, mm-hmm. it's the thing to do, but you waited too late, and you did it too sharply. Yeah, right. was the right time to do. So it's a lot of components of when you Formula One of driving because everyone thinks you just drive fast and turn, mm. but it's a lot of you have to navigate where you want to make your moves. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, being not really part of this, like, I dated a girl who was into NASCAR. That was, like, my extent of getting into NASCAR, <laughs> into, like, racing and such like that. And then also being Well, there's the, a lot of politicking you know, in NASCAR because then people will subconsciously gang up another person and box them in so yeah. they can't and get that can't out. really happen in Formula One. As mu- I'm sure it does happen, but it can't happen as much because your tires are so exposed that, yeah. like, you, you know, boxing click. people in doesn't yeah. work as well. Well, NASCAR, there's almost, like, this underlying, like, Guys are like, hey, let's yeah, we'll box him and so you can't, and everybody else goes ahead. And then yeah, we, yeah. But like as I as I view it, I always I, I've had to make this comparison in my head because I'm a huge fan of the film Speed Racer, which is not really a realistic racing film, but the character, the main character in the film, has such a similarity to Schumacher, where it's just like he's asked why he races, and he says it's the only thing I know how to do, and I've got to do something, and that kind of made me think about Schumacher was because even after his retirement he didn't really stop moving no he was you know? I think people call him an adrenaline junkie yeah because he would do these dangerous sports but he would do it like amp it up mm-hmm. you know like you would do skydiving but 46 times was they said. 46, yeah and then you do skiing which he had the traumatic accident with skiing but mm-hmm. you do dangerous ski you know so there's always that these adrenaline junkie kind of a notice that they have to do the risk or you know risk inventory yeah. if there's no risk involved I don't want to do it yeah exactly yeah. and I, I keep thinking about how, like the, my, my issue with this film comes down to the audience for it like who is this film for that's the danger I do think this is a f- racing film that is more in tune with being a racing film for fans of Formula One being a, you know a documentary for people that knew the story because there there's right. certain yeah. areas it skips kind of the narrative for those of us that don't know as much yeah over <laughs> Outside the content, let's talk about how they manufactured, like, where are you going to send it to people? And I understand mm-hmm. the people that who know about this person, you kind of, it's tailored for them. Yeah. People that are not interested in Formula One and craftsmanship, I don't think would take the time to sit and digest all of it. Yeah. I think Netflix is a perfect avenue for it because you can watch as much as you want of this documentary, go away, and like I did, come back. Yeah. And pause it. Whereas there's other documentaries that you're wholly invested that you don't want to push pause. Mm. But the content kind of slides in that you know that you are marketed for you're already interested in this person yeah rather than i'm somebody going blindly into it probably not marketed for that yeah there are areas in the narrative where i think they assume that you know more details about formula one than perhaps i did and that was kind of my area where i had kind of to you know purse through a few different things do a little bit of looking stuff up especially when it came down to i guess the ending of the film and, and talking about the skiing accident what happened they gloss over some of the details a little heavily where i had to do research whether on they happened. had to do it to get people to talk yeah uh, family members to talk like i'm not going to cover about this yeah, yeah. i just think it, it misses some like I'm not sh- – you know, I, it seems like they probably didn't want to put him on film because they didn't want people to view him in this light as he's still trying to recover because it does seem like even up till last year, he's been trying some new stem cell things. He's been he's been trying to kind of yeah. regain his We don't know you if know, he's just lifestyle. he's bedridden or he's able to yeah. maneuver. And so we don't need to see that version of him. We can remember him at his best, you know. But I do think that details about – him because are they're kind of glossed over at the end where I found myself interested to know more but also like I feel like we didn't get enough information in that ending and maybe fans of Formula One fans of Michael Schumacher maybe already know the details but it right. did feel like for the wider birth of audience it would have been better to at least dive into the accident a little bit more so that we can see it from his point of like not, not see it but like understand it from his point of view right yeah. uh, the the things about what I'm really concerned about is like the editing of it, the choices mm. of where you know documentary. That's where you make your fame mm-hmm. is how you splice to maintain interest. And I think there's a lot of points where uh, why are we talking about this now? This should have been why we're we talking about a a should have been covered in this slot where mm. the, there's a lot of mixture of just keep it going where there I don't think there's a linear follow to this. Yeah, and I I kind of sense that they were just kind of piecing it all together. Where I like a little bit of a navigational lineage 
to follow. Yeah. Rather than he started racing, racing, and then he's not racing anymore. Yeah. Perhaps a nicer marriage between the new footage, the new interviews, with the older footage of the races of the interviews that they have there because they yeah. they can marry those things in tr correctly and it's to be fair it's a very difficult thing to do but I do think that sometimes yeah. it works editing documentaries it hats off to you guys yeah because you're on only you're editing the documentary too <laughs> you know? but um, I also think about if you have if almost that the film might have flowed a little bit better with chapter titles and I know it's a small thing but you have so many different people that Michael was kind of like against. You know, you could have had the Schumacher versus Senna, Schumacher versus Villeneuve, Schumacher versus uh, uh, Heikkinen, and then, you know, kind of go through those section by section, yeah. so that way the audience gets time to... A little to, more clarity for yeah. me, who's going in blindly, I have no idea And then each person. one of these other rivals could have gotten a few minutes of time to set up their character, if you will, yeah. and help us flow to that. Overall, I liked the film, I but did. I do think that there was things missing there that could have made a more tighter, cohesive, and could have brought in people that just have no interest. <laughs> yeah, overall, I have a sense the documentary doesn't really get in as far depth as you want it to do. Yeah. And you're not covering a lot of more things that I think you should. You're glossing over some things and it's very, seems very shallow, but it's not. There's a lot of content, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that I learned about, but oh, yeah. I like a little more depth to this. Yeah, I really yeah. would have liked to have seen, you know, expand upon those areas where Schumacher's dealing with the loss of Senna. Because they didn't, I mean, they were, they were respectful, friendly off the, you know, off the yeah. track. But I would have liked to have dived into more into his psyche following that crash because that's a really big deal. And then to see him have these other crashes, these other incidents, and again, that's all has to be done with old footage or talking to people that were close enough to be able to detail it more. Yeah. But I think it could have been done. Yeah. But yeah. So that's critique. Have you seen Schumacher? Yeah, it's streaming right now on Netflix. Yeah. It's a Netflix original, but hey, they take these things off Netflix all the time, so watch it while you can. I mean, if you like <laughs> Ford versus Ferrari and yeah. Rush, um, like those race car movies, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I also noticed too, if you like these kinds of films too, there's a there's a five season series on Netflix called Formula One that oh. is about the I think about the history and what's going on with it. I'm kind of captivated and kind of want to. No, I mean, it, so. if you didn't know, James Gardner and Paul Newman actually were professional race car drivers. They mm -hmm. had their own cars and actually did race against each other sometimes. Yeah, so because they did movies where they were race cars. I think James Gardner did a movie called Grand Prix. I can't remember Paul Newman's race car movie, but mm -hmm. they continued to do it afterwards. Oh, there you yeah. go. So. so why don't you let us know your thoughts on Schumacher down below? Uh -huh. and maybe give us your favorite racing film, whether it's realistic, unrealistic, anything in between, let us know your favorite race car movie. We'd not, love to hear about it. Uh, it's not Ready Player One. I like it's that. not. It's definitely. not a good race. speed racer, movie. and you know no, it should it's be. it's not. Rush is for me. I love, <laughs> right. I love Rush. Well, yeah. thank you guys for joining us. Make sure, as we said below, check out that Patreon link down there. Yes, and, definitely. And uh, you can find all of my film reviews over at GoatFromReviews.com. Uh, I'll try this again. Yeah. Take two. You can find my show, the St. Paul Filmcast, anywhere to find podcasts, and we should have new episodes coming up in the next couple weeks. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. Enjoy that Patreon so you can pick next month. Yes, we'll please do. Yeah. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs>